welcome. In this video, we're going to learn how to play I Will Remember You as performed by Sarah McLaughlin, also composed by Seamus Egan and Dave Merida. The song is pretty simple. We only have three-ish or four chords, kind of depending on which way you decide to go. There is a lot to do with finger style, so um, whatever you want your focus to be, please feel free to use the timestamps that I have listed either in front of my face or in um, the description of this video. I also have a chord sheet for how to play the song if you like to have everything in front of you or if you have a binder and the link in my description. So let's just jump right in. Um, this song was, of course, a very popular choice for middle school graduations, um, but it always, you know, felt like it had so much weight to it, and now I'm kind of looking at it like, this is actually a pretty simple song. Like, I thought at the time that it was so, like, grave and so, like, intense. Um, and you can definitely sing it this way if you want to. You can perform it intensely if you want. Um, but I'm going to take a little bit of a lighter approach. So let's just dive right into the chords. And again, if these chords are easy for you, you already know them, you can feel free to skip ahead to what I'm going to do later. A chord is... We're going to put our first finger on the second fret of the D string, second finger on the second fret of the G string, and third finger on the third fret of the B string. And so they're all stacked in a row, they're all in the second fret. And that is the A chord. Next, we have the D chord. For me, I use this type of fingering. So I'm gonna keep my second finger where it is. I'm gonna pivot my wrist. That leaves my third finger to slide to the third fret of the B string. And my first finger is gonna go on the second fret of the E string. So that's the D chord, that's how I do it. I know people who do it this way, but that's, um, I feel like that's a less easy transition from A. I like to just go keeping my finger where it is. As For me, it's like the less moving parts, the better. So let's practice just going from A to D. So here's A, one, Two, ready, go. Here's D, now. Here is A, now. As fast as you can, here's D, now. Here is A, now. Here is D, now. Here is A, now. Just depending on your level, if you are more of a beginner and you need to take some more time to practice this and make sure you really, really have it. It is worth the time that it takes to pause the video and work through it on your own, or even just go back to the thing we just exercised. The other chords we have are E. So I'm gonna go straight from D. And I'm going to jump my second finger now to the D string on that second fret. And I'm gonna put my first finger on the first fret of the G string. And that's E. So, going back to D, and back to E, back to D, back to E. E7 has two really, really easy options for it. I use the non-traditional option just because that's what I learned when I was learning ukulele. Um, I actually... I actually just learned it by figuring it out. I didn't realize you could actually just lift up. Um, but it depends on where you want the 7 to be. So I like E7 this way because you have the, the crunch of the two, the, the major second, right here. They're next to each other. If you have this fingering, it's pretty far apart. It just depends on what you prefer to hear and what you prefer to play. I am personally going to play in this video E7 like this. One other reason that this fingering is easier for C for E7 for this particular case is that you can keep your third finger in the same place. You stick it there and then you just make the E chord shape the rest of your fingers. So let's do D to E7. One, two, here's D now. Here's E7 now. 
Here is D now. Here's E7 now. Here is D now. Here's E7 now. Here is D now. Last time E7 now. Since we were already practicing with E7, let's practice with the E7 shape first. One, two, ready, go. E7, here is A now. Here's E7 now. Here is A now. Here's E7 now. Here is A now. Let's do just regular E now. Here is A now. One more time, regular E. And here's A now. Yeah. That just about sums it up for the chord shapes. If you are just going to be strumming and not using fingerstyle, you can feel free to go ahead to the play along if you want to do that. Let's talk about fingerstyle. So I chose a pretty good beginning pattern for, the, for this song. Um, you can keep it very simple, or I'm going to give you some options to um, make it a little bit more interesting or more complex. Whatever you, uh, whatever you feel like doing. So it's good to have options. Like simple is great, but if you know a different way, sometimes it's great to mix it up. So what I like to think about when I am approaching finger style for the first time is um, just that each of my four um, plucking fingers is gonna live on a string. So if my thumb lives on the D string, my uh, index finger lives on the G string, my middle finger lives on the B string, and my uh, ring finger lives on the E string. And you pretty much can just practice now doing one string at a time. You might find um, a lot of chord melodies will have you change where your fingers are. Um, in terms of which finger plucks which string. For now, we're just going to keep it really simple and have our um, fingers live on the strings they live on. The pattern I use a lot is I will start on my thumb, and then I'll go index, and then I'll do the bottom two together, and then I'll do index, and then thumb. So what I'm going to count is one and two and and your index finger is gonna go on the and both times. So it's gonna go thumb and two and thumb and two and thumb and two and thumb and two. So if you add the chords, you're gonna get a nice little texture underneath your song. brand new to you, um, if you haven't done any finger style before, that might just be where you're at now. Um, and then the trick is to just practice it so much that you don't have to think about it, that it just becomes automatic. And that might take a little while, it might take a couple days, it might take a couple weeks, it just depends on what you're good at and who you are and how much you practice. So let's say that getting that one pattern was really easy for you because you've done some finger style before. That's Awesome. Here is one thing that I'm going to kind of throw out there for this song in particular. This is for the first two lines of the chorus. I will remember you. So if you're thinking, I will remember you. She gets to you before she gets to beat one, before the chord really is supposed to change, right? What you can think about instead of one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, you can have your chord change off the beat. So what you can do is um, between D and E, you're going to think one and two and, and then the E, the e chord is going to be on that second and. 
So what I'm thinking is one and two and. And instead of doing the pattern there, I'm putting a little pause and I am doing all three of the strings above. I, I could do the um, I could do the bottom one, but I just don't feel like it's as accessible. Let me show you again. One and two and. Let's try it again. Ready, go. One and two and. Again. Ready, go. One and two and. Here's what that looks like in the context of the whole line. One and two and. One and two and. And then I make a little pattern. I go one and two and. One and two and. And two. One and two and. So one and two and. And two. One and two and. One and two and. And two. One and two and. So the last little cycle is just what we were doing before, that basic pattern. You can make your pattern like the one that I just did or you can do a different pattern. Like it really is just about making it a little bit interesting there, giving it a little bit of a pause. And then on that E chord, um, the purpose of that is to just kind of like bring us back into the song. So little point of reflection, moving on. I did put as a note in my chord sheet for this song, E versus E7. The function of both chords in this song, because we're in the key of A, it's the same function. The, the function of an E chord is to bring you back to home, back to A. So an E7 is going to have more pull. But if you prefer just doing E, no E7 at all, it's still going to sound like we're arriving at A. If you are not keeping track of where E7 is exactly in this chart or where E is exactly in this chart, I don't want to worry about that. You can, um, if you want to be really intentional about your chord choices, that is absolutely okay to do. Play around, see what your favorite combination is, and um, yeah, you know, and, and don't try to compare yourself with Sarah McLaughlin because, um, you know, she is the famous one and we're just people playing music. Do the best you can. Dig into those breaks that she puts in, like her voice. I think breaks in a similar place that my voice breaks, so that's kind of nice and convenient for me. Um, but if you're finding that like it's all in your head voice and you like to dig into it a different way, or you know maybe you're a male singer or you have a lower voice, um, then it's just gonna feel different and you're gonna sing it a different way. So um, that's great, you know, no worries. Let's play it together. I'll do a little introduction and then a little interlude. Um, after each chorus. Starting on A. And a one, two, ready, go. Once there was a darkness deep. 
Even at this night, you gave me everything you had. You gave me life. I will remember you. Will you remember me? Don't let your life pass you by. Weep not for the man. that helps you have one more song for your middle school graduation set. I hope you enjoyed it and remember that there is a chord sheet, a downloadable chord sheet, and the link in the description of this video and that is free if you would like to play along. Until next time, stay mindful, stay musical, stay out of trouble.